Hi everyone, welcome to Lincoln Park Zoo. We are so glad that you are here with us today. On today's episode of Stay Tuned to the Zoo, you may have noticed we are going to revisit enrichment. So first, we need to spin the wheel to see what type of enrichment we're gonna talk about today. I'm so excited. We got one of my favorites, which is environmental enrichment. Now, this breaks down to kind of some smaller words other than environmental and enrichment. So the first part, environmental, this means that something is gonna get moved around inside an animal's habitat. We'll dig into all of the specifics of what that could mean here in just a moment. Now enrichment, as you're seeing, is gonna be anything that increases natural behaviors, encourages them to be exactly who they are as species, and provides some mix up or novelty in their daily routine. So all of the different species here at Lincoln Park Zoo receive some sort of enrichment, usually on a daily basis. Now what kind of enrichment they receive is going to be up to the animal care staff in a very specific and intentional schedule. So the first type, and probably one of my favorites, is mixing up the furniture. So this is going to be when an animal care staff physically rearranges some of the elements of the animal's habitat. Now right here is gonna be a replica of some of the outdoor habitat for the Regenstein Center for African Apes. These are tree stumps that have some ropes attached, as well as a hammock right here. Now this is a replica, but it's a pretty good replica of what that outdoor habitat space looks like. Now for example, to mix up or give environmental enrichment to some of the apes, the zookeepers may call them in in the morning or the afternoon so they can relax behind the scenes. While they're doing that, the zookeepers can go inside the habitat and they can physically move around some of the elements of the habitat. This might mean untying a rope from one location and moving it to another, or specifically moving the hammock from one branch to another. This is going to encourage those great apes to spend more time searching for their perfect hammock or exploring the new ways that the ropes are sitting in the habitat. Now this is just one example. There are lots of ways that moving around the furniture is a great way to mix up the environment for animals. Any of the species that have different elements like branches, stumps, ropes, um, new brows, those are all going to be examples of items that you can move around from place to place in order to mix up the environment for the animal. Now while we're talking about some of these different items, let's look over here at some of the different items that can be moved around or provided in order for those species to be encouraged to use that full habitat. Now one of my, one of my favorites here, I, they're all my favorite really, is this log right here. Now if you can imagine, this is not a real log, it's made of paper mache. We call this a pinata. Now sometimes they're pinatas that get moved around and other times they're physical logs and branches. Now just like moving those, those items like the ropes around, uh, rearranging logs or opportunities for animals to climb, to explore, to dig, all of that rearranging is going to be a fantastic way to move around the environment for the animal. Another thing you might notice is different types of leaves or brows or branches added to different habitats. Now this is great because a lot of the time these items will smell different, they might taste different, they're gonna look different, and their homes are all of a sudden going to feel a little bit different. Now just like at home, if you might rearrange your furniture in your bedroom, or maybe with your grown-ups you rearrange things um, during the holidays, this is a great way to keep enrichment in your life too. Oftentimes things like branches and logs, sometimes rocks, um, these will be provided to birds for nest making. So a lot of the time we want to encourage those natural behaviors from animals like birds. So they may be provided a new branch and then they can collect it whenever they like and make the nest on their own. Now another thing that can be added or removed or changed up in an environment is substrate. So oftentimes substrate is found on the ground or on the bottom layer of the habitat. Sometimes it might be things like wood chips, other times it might be sand or even snow. Now if you can imagine with me here what it would feel like if we took off our shoes and we are barefoot and then we walked over different types of substrates. So we walked over wood chips, and then we walked over sand, and then we walked over snow or ice. 
those things are gonna feel very different. The temperatures are different, the textures are different, and it might be new, new for us if we've never done that before. It's the same for animals here at the zoo. We wanna change up those substrates in order to make sure that they're experiencing something new and inviting, and they can explore their entire habitat. Now, one example of changing up the substrate is going to be snow. Now, if you can imagine what types of animals like snow, polar bear may be the first thing that comes to your mind. It certainly is for me. Siku and Talini, who are the resident polar bears here at Lincoln Park Zoo, have an ice machine inside their habitat that provides them with fresh snow. They're encouraged to do whatever they want to do as a polar bear with that ice and snow. They can eat it, they can fling it around, they can claw at it, roll in it, whatever they would like to do. Now, one of my favorite secrets of the zoo is that snow is also provided to other species like birds. So sometimes when it's snowing outside, the zookeepers will go outside and collect fresh snow and provide it to species like birds or even mongoose. And that way they can experience something totally brand new in their environment. This keeps it really enriching for them. It's something new in their habitat and they can still provide some of those natural behaviors like digging around or sniffing things like they would in the wild. Now these are just a few ways that we enrich the lives of the environment here for species at Lincoln Park Zoo. Thank you so much for joining us here today at Stay Tuned to the Zoo. We hope you learned a little bit more about environmental enrichment and how it benefits the species that call Lincoln Park Zoo home. You may be able to learn next just how to enrich your home as well. Thank you. Thanks Jordan for teaching us all about environmental enrichment. Now let's test our observation skills by looking at some habitats that the zookeepers have changed for our animals here at Lincoln Park Zoo. On the screen, you're gonna see four photos of the same habitat, but from different days. Can you spot the differences? In our first example, let's look at the colobus and swamp monkey habitat. Remember, we're looking at the same habitat, but on four different days. I think I see on day one, a mirror hanging right in the middle from a branch. And then it looks like on day two, I'm noticing a barrel hanging off to the right side of the photo there. On day three, I don't see anything hanging from the branches, so maybe the keepers did sensory enrichment that day. Day four, I'm noticing a puzzle feeder that looks like a spool hanging to the left side of the habitat, probably filled with something delicious like some fruit or bugs. Do you see anything else on these photos at home? In our next example, let's look at the TD monkey habitat. Remember, you're gonna see four photos from four different days. Looks like on day one, I'm noticing quite a few uh, look like puzzle feeders hanging from the, from the branches. And then on day two, I'm noticing a food tub hanging off to the right. And then I think on day three, I'm seeing a platform feeder kind of hanging in the same spot where that food tub was. And then it looks like on day four, I'm noticing a food tub also back in that same spot, but an additional food tub hanging off to the left. Do you see anything else that maybe I missed? Now that we learned all about environmental enrichment, maybe you can think of some ways to change up your own environment at home. Maybe painting the walls, redecorating for the holidays, but don't do anything like that without permission. Thanks for joining us at Stay Tuned to the Zoo and subscribe to our YouTube channel for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday.